Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a second look on a very interesting game, and one of the most controversial fighting games from Capcom is Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Way back, all the way back to the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo, I became a diehard fan of fighting games primarily due to one arcade game, Street Fighter 2. This was the sole reason why I'm such a huge Capcom fan today. I probably lost tons of money in the arcades and at home playing games from Capcom and still do today. One game I stayed away from was Street Fighter Cross Tekken due to the scandal when it was first released and also due to the fact I'm not very much a Tekken fan. I stood with Virtual Fighter and Sega in that department. Street Fighter Cross Tekken was developed by Dimps and Capcom and was released by Capcom in 2012 for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, PlayStation Vita, Microsoft Windows, and Apple iOS. Coming off immense success of the Versus series with Capcom and Marvel and of course SNK, the next logical step was to find another popular fighting IP. The game would be a product of a partnership between Namco and Capcom that would bring in characters from the Tekken and Street Fighter franchises. With fun marketing helmed by Tekken producer Katushiro Harada and Street Fighter IV producer Yoshinori Ono, the partnership was announced and confirmed in 2010, with each company noting that the respective company would create their own version of the game, with Capcom releasing theirs first. The story revolves around a conflict between the Tekken and Street Fighter universes as a crucible crash lands in Antarctica. The only thing that could be understood is that it brings out power to those around it who have conflict with one another, or those who pretty much fight. Pretty weird, but I guess every fighting game needs a story to why they actually go to battle. The core gameplay would be similar to Street Fighter series incorporating elements with super combos and EX attacks. Controlled by a six button controller layout, Tekken fighters were able to use a four button layout in performing combos from their games if they prefer. There was also a tag team element, like in Tekken Tag Tournament, that where each player will pick from a multiple number of players, but the one who wins the most rounds will end up being the winner. There is a gem based system and a Pandora mechanic. Each player can equip their characters with different gem based on their colors that will change their character stats when fighting to assist in attack, defense, speed, vitality, assist, and a cross gauge. For the Pandora mode, if one player's character has less than 25% life, they can be sacrificed for increased strength and infinite cross gauge and that does have a time limit and ends after each round. Although not a huge fan of Tekken, the gameplay here is easy to pick up and play as the controls are extremely tight and extremely responsive. The visuals here are also strong with a lot of effects, animation, and fun backgrounds to fight in. I felt that this was a huge upgrade visually and pushing what you can see on screen at the time. I also enjoyed the look of the Tekken characters that were redesigned by Capcom themselves. With a well thought out game and received well in test markets, Capcom did the absolute unbelievable. They included characters already on the disc that was locked as DLC that the player would have to still pay more money to unlock. This was highly criticized by gamers as they would pay full price for the game, but pay extra to unlock characters that were not downloadable, but already hidden in the game. Capcom responded that they were trying to save hard drive space and lock them on the disc. Of course, nobody believed in this for one second and saw Capcom exploiting players to spend more money. If they were unlockable by playing the game is one thing, but to pay for them is just greedy is how many players saw this decision and myself. After word got out, there was a public backlash where no one wanted to pay extra and saw the game as a scam more than ever. Sales were strong in the beginning, selling over 1 million copies after two months, but then slowed to a crawl. Capcom stated that this was due to too many fighters in the market at the time. With a saturated market, you always will lose sales. Overall, the game would go on to sell to about 1.7 million with many of the sales and reduced pricing to be a part of it. 
I myself bought mine on Steam. Overall, with a revamp system and changing their tune on a lot of what was downloadable or not, the game is still very fun to play. I spend about $5 on sale for the game and it's one of the best deals I ever made. The visuals, gameplay, and overall package does scream AAA game. I would recommend downloading it on Steam as it runs better and is visually breathtaking at higher settings if you like fighting games and you have the computer to do it. Due to a bad mistake that is still done today with other games, Capcom learned the hard way not to piss off the consumer. That's it for this look at a game set up for success but failed due to big business and their decisions. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and Greg, take us out of here and I will see you all next upload.